Hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus Drydocs.com here with Jason. Jason, it is uh, April the 21st, uh, Friday, end of the weekend, time for our weekly update video. Um, lots of things going on in the shop this week. I uh, want to let you know what we're up to. So one of the first things that we are going to talk about, and we're up at the front here, we've got um, a hopefully short project from a really good customer of ours out of Australia. He sent us a built model for final assembly and trimming. It is gorgeous. Let's take a look at it. So if some of you guys um, frequent social media, you may recognize this boat. Um, I believe it was built by Gareth Ha in uh, Scotland. And uh, this is an astute class submarine. I believe the kit was manufactured by OTW. And uh, it is absolutely gorgeous. Came with uh, an OTW cylinder because it's been completely built, set up. Um, like I said, we were contracted just to do final trimming and testing. So we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that that works. Yep, yep. But um, there is a little issue with the uh, shipping of it. Let's see what we're talking about. So this was the cylinder that came with Astute. Brand new, never used, but um, you will notice there's moisture obviously in the ballast tank here, but more alarmingly, um, all throughout both compartments when we got it. So we unpacked the boat and uh, there was water in both the uh, pump compartment and in the motor compartment. So just double check, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if our hypothesis is true. Does that vent go all the way through? Can you see? Uh, it does. Yeah. So with these OTW dive modules, <clears throat> they are vented. So there's a little tiny hole up here and uh, that allows air pressure to vent into the forward and aft compartments um, allows you to get a little bit more volume out of the ballast tank but when you ship the model with water in the ballast tank which it almost always is because you can't get it all out without disconnecting all the hoses and draining it etc etc um, that water can flow into these compartments and then once it's in one compartment it can flow through the conduit and get into the other one not a lot of water like how much was a couple millimeters couple, you know maybe like a tablespoon or yeah. kind of something like that but the problem is it was completely sealed up so all that moisture is just condensing in here on very uh, expensive pieces of electronics so not a good idea had lots of people say oh you know i want to make sure that i charge up my battery without having to open up my cylinder never ever ever do it and this is one of the reasons you always want to open things up make sure that you're venting out your compartments so here's something else i wanted to bring to everyone's attention now this obviously you guys have seen this is our new 212 kit this is the prototype um we found a source uh for some really awesome cases um obviously all custom cut foam we're just in the process of final fitment of the foam so the model's actually going to sit a little lower in there but you get an idea about what we're trying to accomplish it's not it's not much certainly easy to carry you just walk around like a like a suitcase which will be pretty awesome there's room for the radio you know, the antenna, the fobs, uh, and even a little stand once we get it in there. So um, these, we're not going to stock them, but we've got access to them. We can custom order them for you. So if you have a 212 model, um, we can get these ordered for you. And uh, we can either just sell you the case and you can do the cutting or you can pay us and we'll do the cutting for you once you get it in conjunction with one of our model kits, obviously, of course. Um Behind Jason here is a model that we just got in. Um, this is a 3D printed Gotland class submarine. Um, it's got a super unique, you wanna pop that open? I just wanna show everybody what it's like inside. We don't have the dive planes mounted. We kind of just got this in. Um, but check out the pinkness there, pretty epic. Um, this is a, a scratch built OTW dive module clone uh, watertight cylinder, um, you know, really big 
geared pump and uh, solenoid valve and, you know, big full size servos and everything baffled uh, ballast tank. But one of the really cool things uh, about this is the magnetic clutch for the, uh, for the motor. You can see this spinning the motor inside there and that's all magnetic. So no opening in there for the main drive shaft. It's pretty cool stuff. So that's slated eventually down the road sometime when we get the time to uh, finish it up and have it turnkey ready to go. So if you like the Gotland with its X-tail rudders and uh, super cool watertight cylinder, let me know. We'll see if we can figure something out. A uh, few more projects uh, behind us. Um, obviously the one that Jason's holding is of a lot of interest to some of you. This is the first production version flying sub watertight cylinder. Um, so we've got things all kind of nailed out and streamlined. The cool thing about this, we found a line of uh, pretty cool electronic speed controllers that do automatic mixing of two inputs. So it's actually designed for dual screw boats, which is this kind of is. So uh, you don't have to control left and right with two different sticks. It's all on one stick. You've got your throttle forward and rudder left and right, just like you would have uh, on a single screw boat. But um, yeah, kind of uh, an upgrade over my uh, initial prototype for the flying sub. So now that we've got that all nailed down, it did take a little while to get everything figured out. We're deep into production. I'm thinking by the end of next week, we should have most of those flying sub kits uh, shipped. So there you go. Um, picked this little baby up. Uh, this was actually uh, built by a gentleman by the name of Justin Fitz. And I got uh, a hold of this. It is slated for our uh, ultra super awesome Nautilus Dry Docks uh, special treatment. Uh, it's going to be refitted and overhauled and basically um, swapped up with, with a full uh, new paint job. Uh, we're going to fix up some of the fitment issues in here. We're going to swap out the um, domes and all of that stuff, clean up these. So this has like a full interior inside and everything. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. He did a really neat job on it. So once that's all done, that'll be uh, going up for sale too. Uh, again, working on that in our free time. Uh, quick project, not a quick project, future project, huge project that uh, we're working on. We did some 3D printing parts for a really cool 148th Albacore. Um, we did some test prints in high definition resin. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of deal, detail here, but um, because the, the customer is still kind of dictating things and I didn't really have permission, but I just wanted to, to show you um, just some of the ultra cool, amazing detail that's possible with this. And this will be going into the master pattern, which will eventually be molded. So the final production boat will have all of this super cool deck detail in it. So that's exciting too. So this week we um, went through all of the systems on the boat again, found three that had stopped working for whatever reason. We had a faulty servo, um, a messed up wire, a wire of all things ended up um, not working and causing grief. The guns. Yeah, well, that was the gun. Oh, that was the, that was the cable. Right. Yeah. But at any rate, um, we got it all working. So every single function on the boat is working at this moment. All like 1,800 of them. Um, so the other thing that we did is we went ahead and we weathered it up. So I don't know if you guys remember what it looked like before, but um, I went ahead and put uh, a weathering job on it. Um, added a little bit of a scum line. We got soot by the exhaust. Um, it turned out really cool when you when you stand and look at it from a distance it, it really does look like a real boat it's pretty cool so next steps final trim in my pool coming up next week early next week may require a secondary trim uh, after the final final trim our hope is that it will come with us to the Fitz boat float coming up next Saturday in Houston. So that would be the inaugural voyage, the maiden voyage of the Baleo. So we are keeping our fingers crossed that it's going to be all ready. And then 
hopefully it performs really well uh, at the pond down in Houston next week. So that's the goal. Aside from that, uh, worked on getting a couple of 250 series cylinders put together. Now we got all the parts here. There's some silicone curing on those. Um, the 212 is still ongoing. And um, the reason being is we're trying to make it as easy as possible. So we've actually ended up completely making custom pieces for linkages um and mounting bulkheads and like all of this kind of stuff so uh it's not as easy just putting a kit together because we just got a shell and we're, we're putting this all together we could have given you the kit exactly as we put the prototype together but it takes a certain degree of experience in order to do that um, and we're trying to simplify it as much as possible make it as robust as we can so that it uh, ends up being the best product possible once this one is all done, that'll end up going out. That'll be a, that's a turnkey boat. We're going to start a fresh build uh, and video the whole thing and get it all out. So um, I know initially we were thinking that we were going to be shipping out a lot of these kits at the end of this month. It looks like it'll probably be about two weeks later than that. It'll probably be closer to uh, middle of May. So apologies for the delay for those of you who are waiting on your 212 kits, um, but the wait will be worth it. I, uh, I promise. Second to last thing um, we took today because it was Friday, um, half an hour, yeah, half an hour, take. 40 minutes, and uh, played around with some fire a little bit more. So now we've got everything rigged up remotely, uh, and this is all handled through the uh, receiver on a, on a uh, radio. So we can, we can fire our fire remotely, and uh, we think we've got a game plan for implementation in the Batmobile. Next step um, coming up here soon. Um, this test went really well. We're happy with the fireball. It was of satisfactory volume. Very cool. All right, the last thing, if you guys uh, haunt my website uh, on a regular basis, you'll have noticed that yesterday the product scope changed um, significantly. We culled our products from 186 down to 75, 74. Um, this means that a lot of things like small parts and like detail parts and little peripheral things like that are no longer offered at this time. Now, I haven't deleted them, but at this time, we made a decision um, based on an analysis of our sales and our production capabilities to make a focus on things uh, that are hard to get for the hobby. And we're talking about things like cylinders um, and obviously builds and then focusing more on content creation like videos telling you guys how to build your boats. So um, obviously that's going to impact our, you know, uh, cash flow situation, uh, but hopefully it'll end up balancing out uh, in the end because we should be able to put more volume through in terms of cylinders and uh, built. So we're keeping our fingers crossed there. Now, um, as part and parcel of this, what's gonna end up happening, we're gonna be liquidating a lot of inventory coming up in the coming weeks. So just watch for information on that. Um, some of you guys are familiar with my flash sales and the bargain bin and that kind of thing. Um, it's gonna be uh, a pretty epic sale event. So <laughs> we're gonna keep everybody busy here. We might need to wait for Logan to come. Maybe we'll put him in charge of that whole we'll thing. Start slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So big changes, um, hopefully for the better. Just letting you know so that there's no tears when you go to the website and don't find the product that you've been waiting on buying. Uh, sorry about that. With that, that's the end of the week. That's a wrap. Um, words of wisdom. Can't use the same one as last week. <laughs> uh... Safety first. Don't play with fire in a shop. You might burn it down. Yeah, that's right. Keep keep your uh, fire extinguisher hap, uh, uh, handy at all times. There you go. Safety tip of the week. With that, um, on behalf of Bob Martin, the RC Sub Guy, and Peace. we're going to let you go. Have a great weekend, everyone, and catch you next time. <laughs>